Greetings everyone, this is Rock and Roll Spot Country with another installment of Building the Team. So last time we uh, <clears throat> last time the team was our turkey shoot, 400 points. Um, I ran two games with the Brotherhood team. It, it did alright. Didn't win, but it did alright. And one game with the Wakanda team, which did not do well at all. But also, it, in part it had to do with the team I was up against, so, you know. Um, but, the, uh, the Brotherhood team, uh, did much, a little bit better than anticipated. Uh, Dakin was pretty much a, as soon as everyone saw Dakin on the team, it was just like, nope, gotta get rid of him. First to fall, both games. But anyway. So this upcoming week's game, with Spider-Man Far From Home coming out, well, and the possibility of pre-release followed by um, release events for two weeks of Sealed, <clears throat> we're doing a uh, game inspired by Spider-Man Far From Home, or No Way Home. Basically, for, again, 400 points must include at least a Spider-Man related character. By Spider-Man related character, generally speaking, Spider-Man, Spider-Man family, Sinister Syndicate, you know, push someone with, with one of those three keywords. So, one of these teams might look a little familiar from a previous video from approximately, I want to say maybe a year ago, or maybe not, maybe just earlier this year. I, it's this year's kind of felt like it went on forever, you know, just like last year kind of did. But anyway, so let's get started, shall we? First off, we've got ourselves a Sinister Syndicate team, and yes, this is a team that still look familiar. We've got Sandman from Earth X. Sandman here comes in at fifty points. He's got the Spider-Man ally team ability, making him a wild card. He also has the Avengers, Citizen Syndicate, and Wild Pack keywords. Finally, we have two traits. First off is Sinister Six United, which will show up on two other figures as well. Stealth, but only if your team, your force has three or more characters. Improved movement, improved movement hindering, but only if you, your force has five or more characters. Modify all combat values by plus one, but only if you have if your force has exactly six characters. Okay. Well, we've got six characters, so until someone gets KO'd, everything plus one. Next, our next trait is called Drifting Sands. As a free action, if Sandman has no action tokens, choose a standard power print on this card that he can't already use already. He can use that power until your next turn. Okay. Now looking at his dial, uh, speed, we've got options, we've got sidestep, followed by charge, followed by plasticity, followed by flurry, followed by leap climb, yes. On defense, we open up with super senses, then we got invulnerability, then toughness, then combat reflexes, then regeneration, and finally on damage we have a single click of shape change. Sadly just the one though, but with that drifting sands trait, or shifting sand straight, you can pick shape change if need be. Especially if, say, he's double tokened and therefore can't move, can't be given an action. Anyway, next up we've got the Lizard. And yes, five of these characters are HeroClix versions of the uh, of Spider-Man movie villains that, will be, that have been confirmed to be appearing in Spider-Man No Way Home. So Blizzard comes in at 50 points, has the Sinister Syndicate team ability, as well as the Sinister Syndicate, Animal, Monster, and Scientist keywords. We've also got the Sinister Six United trait, as well as another trait, Cellular Regeneration. As a free action, if uh, Lizard's on an even click number and has no action tokens, heal him one click. Okay. Looking at his dial, we open up with a click of charge, so we get a couple clicks of sidestep, then some leap climb. A full run of blade claws fangs. On defense, we have a couple clicks of uh, toughness, and the rest is combat reflexes. 
Sadly, no Battle Fury. Next, we've got Mysterio. Now, yeah, Mysterio was in uh, Far From Home and seemingly, quote unquote, died. Ain't bu I'm not buying his. I'm not buying Mysterio's death. It, it, it feels too convenient. Uh, to be fair, here's my little weird far, uh, No Way Home theory. Somehow... Uh, no. Actually, that doesn't work. Uh, the, the theory kind of was that it's not really that strange it's, this Peter's dealing with, but rather it's... Uh, Mysterio. Kind of based on the idea that Doctor Strange seems a little off in the trailers, so. But it likely is Doctor Strange, so, yeah, anyway. But like I said, I wouldn't be surprised to find out that Mysterio faked his death in, uh, in Far From Home. But anyway, Mysterio comes in at 60 points. He's got the Sensor Syndicate team ability as well as the Sinister Syndicate and Celebrity Keywords. We have a trait. Illusions and Nightmares. Mysterio starts the game with with the Mist Marker atta attached, and while it is attached, all lines of fire drawn to Mysterio are hindered. Maybe give a power action and, and choose an opposing character within range and line of fire and attach the Mist Marker to them, removing it from anywhere else. When another character with the mist marker attached makes an attack, the targets can use shape change. If the target can already use shape change, the target can use super senses. When the target, when the character with the mist marker attached hits his KO, attached the mist marker back to Mysterio. Okay, looking at his dial, um, get a click of stealth, a couple clicks of mind control, then stealth, and then one more click of mind control. On attack, we open up with nothing. Then we get a uh, Click of in-cap on the second click, and then a click of in-cap at the very end. And a 9 the entire time. Um, defense goes back and forth between Super Senses and uh, Barrier. Damage, we have a couple clicks of Probability Control. A blank middle click, and then a fourth click of, of uh, Probability Control. Um, Mysterio is going to be, more, honestly, will be much more of a support fit piece. Um, Though, uh, much more support piece, and, uh, yeah. If he, uh, attacks, it, he will definitely be adjacent to at least a member, to a member of the Citizen Syndicate. Next up, we've got Electro. Electro here comes in at 70 points and has the Sinister Syndicate team ability. He's also got the Sinister Syndicate keyword. Electro's not really been, you know, big outside of, you know, Spider-Man books. He helped the Savage on Mutates break someone out, break Sauron out of the raft, the new Avengers. Um, I think he's worked some, like, generic crews of just, hey, throw some villains in. We need some villains for this character to beat up on. But yeah, anyway, looking at his dial, we have a couple of clicks of running shot followed by a few clicks of sidestep. A full dial of the special power light you all up. When Electro makes a range attack, he can use precision strike. If he targets at least two characters, he can use he can also use energy explosion. If he targets three characters, the damage dealt is penetrating damage. Okay, all right. And we have a full run of energy reflection on uh, defense. Next up, we've got Dr. Octopus. Hello, Peter. Doc Ock here comes in at 75 points and has the Sinister Syndicate team ability, as well as the Sinister Syndicate and Scientist keywords. We've also got the Sinister 69 in trait, as well as another trait, Arms of the Octopus. Uh, at the beginning of your turn, you may choose one. Energy, explode, er, energy Deflection, Flurry, Passenger 2, Free, move up to four squares. 
turn. Dr. Octopus can use the chosen power or ability to your next turn. We've also got improved movement, ignores elevation, el elevator terrain, and hindering and characters. Yeah, and characters. Next, looking at his dial, we have a full run of sidestep. And on attack, we get a couple clicks of precision strike at the very end. Defensively speaking, you open up with mastermind, then we get a few clicks of uh, um, combat reflexes. On damage, we open up without wit, and then we get some mid dial leadership. Now, I've said this every time I I, I uh, look at this figure. The mid dial leadership is actually very interesting to, to me, at least. Uh, most figures leadership tend to have leadership top loaded. Um, they they've got it, boom, you know. But seeing it at the at the top of a dial or the or the back end of the dial is always interesting because that, it's, it's a it's a nice surprise, you know, kind of a late dial, kind of a late game. You're like, oh, by the way, leadership. But um, we got a few things for for him. We'll be looking at uh, we have a few objects to to look at as well after the, after team. And our final member of the Sinister Syndicate team is the Green Goblin. No. So, Gobby here comes in at 75 points, has the Sinister Syndicate team ability, as well as the... <sighs> Gotta take a breath, there's a lot coming. Cabal, Dark Avengers, Sinister Syndicate, Thunderbolts, and Politician keywords. We've got two traits. First off is Pumpkin Bombs. Green Goblin may start the game with the Pumpkin Bombs, equipped at no cost. Next, we have yet another Sinister Six. Adjacent friendly characters with the Sinister Six keyword, or Sinister Syndicate keyword, Modify their attack plus one or plus two instead of targeting a character with the Spider-Man family keyword. Now keep in mind that with you know replace then modify, if he is adjacent to a uh, character who could benefit from copying from borrowing his attack value, that character will get an eleven attack and then an additional plus one. So yeah. So if he was, say, carrying around Electro, who'd been maybe hit a few times, well, then Electro could just be like, hey, hey, all right, I've got, I got 12 attack. Come on my last click, but I got 12. So yeah. Which, yeah, no worries. But uh, anyway, looking at his dial, he is a secret identity character, but we're not using Norman Osborn figure, so we're not going to bother with secret identity portion. So yeah, we've got... A few a couple who's running shot then some sidestep. On attack, we have a full dial of the special power a bomb for any occasion which grants precision strike, but may use it when attacking two or more characters. We get a range destroy action. Green Goblin may destroy up to three objects and or pieces of blocking terrain. Yeah, which uh, each of which he will need line of fire to. Okay. Then uh, we get some, on defense we get some toughness followed by energy deflection. Damage, you go up with leadership, then you get some perplex, followed by some late dial range combat expert. Okay, alright. Now, first and foremost, we've got, so we have, I gotta mention, we got some objects. First off, we've got the pumpkin bombs. I was say, if we're gonna get more, if we're gonna have a goblin, you know, kinda has some pumpkin bombs, right? So, pumpkin bombs, they have a cost of five. The effect is energy explosion with a minimum range of four. Knockback, but only during range attacks. Okay. This character may be given range destroy actions regardless of their damage value. Okay, that, that's actually really cool. So, unless, unless you've got a way of uh, unequipping someone, which, I mean, there are there are ways out there, but, you know. Yeah. Anyway, um, it's not going to matter if his damage dips below 3 or not, because, well, he's constantly able to as long as he has the pumpkin bombs, he can actually just he can use make range destroy actions. Next up, we've got the octopus arms. Obviously, these are for for Doctor Octopus. They grant they cost ten points. Grant giant reach of two, flurry, and improved movement in order to elevation and hindering. Now, the improved movement's not going to matter because he's already got that improved move. The improved movement uh, elevated, elevated, uh, and in fact, he's got elevated or improved movement characters. The giant reach, however, that will. But also flurry, so now the the perk here is that 
it's basically, we're basically saying that he can't that, that he, by giving him by giving him the octopus arms. He can he doesn't he already has flurry, so that's not something you have to think about for his arms of the octopus trait. Why the arms of the octopus trait doesn't have any giant reach is beyond me, but you know, hey, whatever. But you know, you you can pick move up to four squares. Hell. Pick that, sidestep, move four squares. You just, you basically just charge six, and you still got giant reach of two. So you can and you can flurry. Or, you know. Hell, if he's got uh, if he's token if he's token, maybe you know. Passenger two, pick up a couple friendly characters and get the hell out of there. Or if he's tokened as well, you know, hey, energy shield deflection. You got options though. You don't know. And hell, you don't uh, you can pick energy shield deflection when you're actually, you know. You know, when you're actually adjacent, or when you know, on a turn you're going to attack. That way, if you're, you know, rain, if you're attacked from a, from range, you got the ESD as well. So yeah. Anyway, next up we've got the illusion generator, which is form of stereo. This costs ten points. Uh, it grants shape change, and when the character uses it and succeeds, after resolutions, you get to create an illusion bystander. Illusion bystanders um, have, for scoring purposes, have a point cost of zero, um, but uh, they have incapacitate and shape change. And that's that, and they're uh, they're autonomous as well. So yeah. So that is our Sinister Syndicate team. And yes, this was based off my uh, Eric Larson uh, Revenge of the Sinister Six uh, team build, but I made a few changes. Uh, swapping out Vulture for for uh, Lizard and uh, Hobgoblin for Green Goblin. But yeah, anyway. So next up, we have ourselves a Spider-Man team. Now, I can already hear you saying, but you said it has to be, you know, there has to be, you know, so you're not doing a theme team if you got spy, if you got a Spider-Man, I mean, an X-Men team. Who's a Spider-Man related character with the X-Men? I mean, aside from Iceman, though, there's only the one I think with Spider Fam Spider-Man family. Um, well, we'll just see, won't we? Anyway, kicking things off, we've got Moira McTaggart. The good doctor here comes in at 20 points, is unique, and has the X-Men team ability. She also has the X-Men and Scientist keywords, as well as a rally ability. Now, for those who may not remember, even though I probably use figures with rally abilities every week anymore, um, ra rally abilities are key off of, do of attack of the, di the dice and attack rolls. Currently, the only rally abilities available key off of opposing attack rolls. So, and even then, an opposing attack roll of five. The upcoming Empire set will have a, will have figures that key with with rally abilities that key off of friendly and as well as any attack roll, and and figures whose uh, whose rallies key off of other numbers than five. But uh, her rally ability, at, uh, as a power action, you may remove a rally die from her to heal an adjacent character. Two clicks. Okay, all right. Looking at her dial, we've got we open up with a click of stealth, a couple clicks of size up, back to stealth. On defense, we've got super senses for, for most of the dial, followed by uh, by regeneration. And on our first and last click with a special damage power, Muir Island Research Lab. As a power action, give an adjacent friendly character with the X Men keyword a rally die. Okay, all right. She's kind of a must right now for X-Men teams, in my, in, in my humble opinion. There are a lot of good X-Men figures with uh, rally abilities, and there and there's also some, you know, okay ones with rally abilities. So, yeah. The trick is making sure you've got the leadership to remove tokens from her, though. 
But anyway, moving on to our next figure, we've got Marvel Girl. Marvel Girl here, here comes in at 30 points. It has the X-Men team ability. She also has the Excalibur, Phoenix Force, Star Jammers, X-Men, and Future Keywords, and a Rally ability. Telekinesis as a free action, remove a remove her rally die, remove a rally die from her. To use telekinesis as free. Okay. Looking at her dial, we've got a couple hooks of sidestep, then a couple hooks of mind control, a couple hooks of uh, penetrating blast, a couple hooks of energy deflection, a couple hooks of super senses, and some late dial exploit weakness. Okay. I like how on all four clicks she's she's capable of dealing penetrating damage. But uh, anyway. On to our next figure, we've got, yep, you guessed it, Wolverine. 45 points, X-Men team ability, uh, Avengers, Gene Grace, Profile Higher Learning, Weapon X, X-Men keywords, Rally ability, Granny Regen. You can use the Rally die instead of ro actually rolling for Regen, so yeah. We've looked at this figure a lot. There's no real point in, re in, in really going into the figure, so. And there's the dial. Three click of charge, two click of flurry, full dial of blades, full dial of toughness, full dial of exploit weakness. Next up, we've got Long Shot. Long Shot comes in at 50 points, has the X Men team ability as well as the Excalibur, Exiles, Mojoverse, X Factor, X Men, and Celebrity keywords. We have a rally ability. Uh, when Long Shot makes an attack, you may replace a, a die in the attack roll with his rally die. Also, long shots rolls of double fives are critical hits. Okay. Next up, looking at the dial, we've got a few clips of running shot and a couple clips of sidestep. Some incapacity followed by blade sloss bangs. Uh, energy deflection followed by super senses and a full dial of the special power. Born lucky, I guess. Probability control. If one long shot is the target of an attack, he may use it regardless of range and line of fire. Protected Outwit and Pulse Wave. Okay, alright. So he can... Prob he can probably... Uh, he can probably pop Pulse Wave roll. And if someone with... Say, 8 range were to take a shot at him, or perhaps a, a certain Avenging Archer with a printed range value of 7 were to take a shot at him, well... From 7 squares away, he can... Still prob it. He's, yeah, I mean, he's not, like, insanely good, uh, but he's still quite good. So, you know, for, for, for the points, he's good. Anyway, moving on to our next figure, we've got Warpath. Warpath comes in at 50 points, has the X-Men team ability, as well as the Hellions, New Mutants, Weapon X, X-Force, X-Men, and Warrior keywords. We've got a Rally ability, which grants Stealth. As a free action, you can remove his his rally die to make a range attack with a five range and using improved targeting hindering train. Okay, okay, here. Yeah. Looking at the dial, we get some charge followed by flurry, full dial of blades, full dial of toughness, three clicks of exploit weakness followed by two clicks of outwit. Okay, all right. He's, he's a decent figure actually. Next up, we've got Blink. Blink comes in at 60 points. She's got the X-Men team ability, as well as the Age of Apocalypse, Exiles, Generation X, Gene Grey School for Higher Learning, New Mutants, Utopia, and X-Men keywords. We have a we have a rally ability. Um, when she makes an attack after resolutions, you may remove her rally die to place it, her or a hit character up to five squares from their current square. Now, an important, some important clarifications to make on this. It does not specify after she hits. The only thing specified about hitting is that it gives you a secondary, a second, another choice in who, in who can be the uh, the target, uh, be targeted by the rally die. If she hits, you can move a hit character up to five squares from their, from their current square. If she misses, you can move her. If she hits, you can move her. A place. So yeah. Then we have another trait. See ya, wouldn't want to be ya. This grants facing teleport. When she uses it, she has passenger three, but only to carry friendly characters that share a keyword with her. Okay, well, 
Everyone on this team's got the X-Men keyword, so yeah, we're good. Hell, some even have the Exiles keyword. Got one, another, we got, what, at least, we have one, two, one with the Jean Grey's Proof of Higher Learning keyword, so yeah, you know, some new mutants, so yeah, you know, we got plenty, we got plenty of shared keywords with them. But, uh, looking at her dial, we've got a few clicks of Running Shot, then a few clicks of Flurry. We get some late middle, we get some, uh, Blaze Claws Fang on the back half of the dial. Energy Deflection followed by Combat Reflexes. And Leadership for the first three clicks on Damage. Okay. Alright. Not too shabby. Leadership's always handy to, good to have in a multitude. Which brings us to our next figure. Cyclops. Cyclops here comes in at 70 points. He's got the X-Men team ability as well as the X-Men keyword. He has a trait. Jean, which won't matter because Jean Grey is not on, on this team. So we're not going to go into, into the Jean trait. Looking at his dial, on speed we open up a, special, a couple of of special power Optic Blast, which grants Running Shot and Force Blast. We then get a couple of of running sh uh, Force Blast, followed by a couple of clicks of Side Set. On Attack, we open up a couple of clicks of uh, Penetration Psychic Blast, followed by a couple of clicks of Precision Strike. We've got a nice four-click block of Willpower on Defense, followed by toughness. Then on damage we open up the special power Commanding Leader. Leadership. When Cyclops uses it and succeeds, after resolutions, choose another friendly character that shares a keyword as zero action tokens. This turn, that character has free, have speed, then move. Okay. Then we get a couple of clicks at the end of uh, Range Combat Expert. Okay. Alright. So we get there's two leaders, and finally... We've got Spider-Man. Now, what's Spider-Man doing on an X-Men team, you wonder? Clearly, it's not theme, right? Well, Spider-Man here gives him 75 points, has the Spider-Man family, reporter, and scientist keywords, improved movement, ignores elevated terrain, and a trait, Marvel Team-Up. When establishing theme teams, choose a char named keyword a character on your starting force can has. Spider-Man gains that keyword. Yes, we'll be choosing X-Men. Looking at his dial, we get a couple clicks of charge, then a couple clicks of running shot, then a couple clicks of flurry on speed. On attack, we open up the click of quake, and we get some mid dial and capacitate. On defense, we open up with some uh, combat reflexes followed by super senses, then the last two clicks alternate between combat reflexes and super senses. On damage, we open up the special power quips and thwips, which grants leadership, but he succeeds on a four through six. This thing is way to a couple clicks of perplex. Okay, all right. And that is this week's teams. Um, as always, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Let me know what your thoughts on the look. Let me know in the comments and your thoughts on the two on the two teams. Um, we got this week's comic book roundup com coming up. Uh, most likely, actually, most likely on Wednesday. Um, we've also got our, uh, Fear State recap, uh, conclusion. I think that's, that, because I know we concluded more of the Bounty Hunters, uh, recaps. That said, we're going to be starting up a, uh, new one here, pr uh, pretty soon. Thank with courtesy of the upcoming Devil's Reign crossover. But yeah, uh, anyway, um... As always, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Links to my Facebook, Twitter, Patreon, and PayPal will be found in the description box down below. This is Rock and Roll Spock signing off, saying live long and rock hard.